Welcome, everyone. My name is Amy DiPlacido, and I'm the curator of exhibitions at San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. And today we are here with Pilar Aguero Esparza for the artist spotlight interview. Originally from Boyle Heights in East LA, Pilar was exposed to the potential and richness of materials and the love of the handmaid working in her parents' shoe shop. She received a BA in art from the University of California, Santa Cruz and MFA from San Jose State University. She's been an active artist, arts educator, and arts administrator in the Bay Area, exhibiting her work in numerous institutions, such as San Jose Museum of Art, Triton Museum, Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, Macla Palo Alto Art Center, and the Dion. Welcome, Pilar. Nice to be here, Amy. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, thank you. Well, I should say that we actually met a couple of years ago. I think it was 2018. We had a solo exhibition of your work called Color Perception. Yeah, I was wondering, could we take a look at your work today? Sure, love to share it. So I did want to share a little bit, um, kind of a, at the point where I went back to school and um, did, started my MFA program at San Jose State. And that's a my, because my undergraduate degree was in painting and printmaking. And so I really was interested in working with materials in a different way um, and start to really think about space. So I, I um, joined the program specifically to work with Consuelo Jimenez Underwood, who um, is an amazing weaving artist, uh, contemporary weaving artist. And uh, she was heading that department there at San Jose State. Uh, but I also uh, worked with Rupert Garcia, who was in the painting program at that time, and Shannon Wright. So they were the three people in my committee. Because I, so I was really interested in learning about sewing uh, at that time, and that's uh, these are a couple of works that I did um, for my MFA show, kind of incorporating uh, materials such as my daughter's homework. So another thing that I was really exploring is is um, some of the, my own concerns in terms of my imagery and the kind of um, subject matter that I wanted to work with. And my daughter at the time was um, two years old when I started the program. And as I saw her going to starting to go to school, kind of thinking about all the work that she was being made to do. And so I kept her homework for about a year and just kind of I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, but I thought like, oh, this is interesting and very um, curious as she's a first grader or second grader and has so much work to do, right? Like, so um, that's when I decided to construct this kind of house homage to, to her homework and to this, this period of a year of all these assignments, right? So this is kind of what compelled me to start this homework house project, as well as doing some prints based on some of um, uh, the homework assignments on working with this particular line paper, writing paper, your dog is lost. So it was really fascinating her writing and her handwriting of trying to kind of learn language and what have you. Um, but another thing that I wanted to mention kind of in, my, in how my interest in materials and in particular, um, as you mentioned in, in the introduction, my parents uh, were shoemakers. And so growing up, I did, um, grew up in a household of makers of crafts people and they had a shoe shop in South Central Los Angeles um, and so I would work my summers there and learned a lot about the craft of working with leather in particular making shoes the um, Mexican huarache so I do have a little example here that I kind of just to show people so when growing up learning about the processes of, of making with leather lace the ideas of shoes and, and footwear um, and in particular weaving so when I was um, doing my undergrad work I, I knew I wanted to work with leather and kind of I, I thought that there was a rich source to that but I wasn't sure how to do that um, so going back to get my MFA and starting to think about material I thought well there is a potential to do that um, with, you know, sculpture, but again, I wasn't sure how to enter that quite yet. So in, to, in 2010, after I had finished my um, master's is when I went and did a, a um, project with my parents. So I spent a summer with them again, 
um, and decided I was going to do almost like a residency, an artisan residency in their shop uh, with the intention of really kind of recording their processes, doing interviews with them about um, their work, and then coming back to my studio and bringing the materials and the processes that they worked with and how can I make the mind, <clears throat> excuse me, in a more of a context of a, of a fine artist. And that's um, how I, I really got interested in working with the leather lace, but then seeing, you know, me, everything from leather lace and leather paint and uh, nails and um, the different materials that they use to construct and, and create shoes, but then kind of thinking, I'm not making shoes, but I'm making art. So how can I, I use that. Um, another, another kind of segue in terms of uh, my work, I think is also how uh, subject matter, right? Because it, it, at the time in 2010, another project that I did was kind of synchronistically with that um, residency with them is um, this installation. I had done a um, casting of my daughter's shoe, feet. Right, so these are actually crayon castings of her feet in the colors of what was um, what I discovered of the multicultural uh, Crayola crayon pack, which was the skin tone set. And when I found it, uh, she was 10 years old, and I was really curious because I, you know, I'm an educator, an art educator, and in seeing this material, I said, "Wow, this really kind of." Um, stumped me a little bit, right? It's like, this is curious. Um, how do you use these with kids? Do you really talk about skin tone? You talk about race? Um, so it, it was something that really compelled me and, and also kind of fueled the subject matter they wanted to, to work with. And, and, and that is, um, you know, subject of race, the subject of uh, skin tone, skin color, colorism. Um, and in particular, as a parent, I think, you know, seeing her, um, so in, in the process of casting her feet in each of the colors, like, you know, I bought lots and lots of crayon packs to be able to do that. Um, but I really felt like it's a process that sort of segued into the subject matter that I wanted to work with and trying to merge these different materials of leather, footwear, feet, right? Because my impulse to cast her feet then reminded me of the shoe laps that my parents um, worked with for, you know, and I saw every day in their shop, right? These foot forms. So I was kind of connecting some, somewhat um, subconsciously, right? Some of what they do and, and then trying to bring it, but into a different context and subject matter for myself. So this is a, an installation I did with the casting of her feet and then the portrayal of those skin tone colors on the wall. So that is kind of merging again, my interest in painting as well as um, in sculpture and then these particular materials. So that is kind of one example of what I did, but some of the, this kind of skin tone chart and the way that they are almost these bars started to remind me of also working with leather lace, right? Of these strips of materials that then become, if you put them together in a certain way, if you weave them, you start to make something that's more three-dimensional, right? So that all these things were something that I kept trying to mine as I worked and, and kind of intuitively kept pushing either the material or the imagery. Um, but along with using the castings of the crayons, I also did, um, well, this is actually another casting uh, of my daughter's feet, but I did this when she was almost 18, in 2018. So I did the first casting of her feet, of her feet that you just saw when she was 10 years old. And then I wanted to do it one more time because at this point, my daughter was a lot older, right? She's almost a young adult. And I'm wanting to ask that question of what color are you, right? What color would you pick? How do you see yourself as a person of color in our country? Um, I decided, to, okay, to recast it, but use it as, as an experience also to, as a chance to have more of a conversation. So these pieces were for a series that I called um, uh, or dance conversations because she's a dancer. And so I wanted to cast her feet in these dance positions as well. So the, the first time I cast her feet, she just placed her foot in the alginate and then just, just kind of put it in there, right? In, in the alginate mold to create it. Um, so it was a lot more passive for her, but she was younger. So I couldn't really engage in that kind of conversations. I'm like, what color are you? She was kind of mystified by that question. But as a young adult that I could do a lot more of an exchange. And so I wanted to like, okay, so show me about how you do dance positions. Let's cast your feet in these positions and also tell me a little bit about what do you experience in, 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 in these ideas about skin tone, skin color, 
um, race? What are your ideas about that? So it, it was for me more of a dance and a conversation with her um, that I did in, in 2018. But these materials I have used, the, the crayons, is because they are a pictorial material, I have done drawings with them. And um, certainly in after the Ferguson uprisings in 2014, I believe, um, which is really interesting, I, I did a year later in trying to figure out, well, what would be appropriate drawings or imagery that I can use this crayon material of skin tones? And so that's when I thought like, yes, the protests and the use of the body and the raising of the hands and the kind of um, idea of our body is our agency and that's what we must use to be able to rise up, to stand up against issues of, of racism, of colorism, of, of what have you. So that, that I did a these series of images based on um, the Ferguson uprising and, and the protests at that time. But it's interesting because now we kind of another cycle of that after the killing, uh, the murder of George Floyd um, by the Minneapolis police. And we have this resurgence again of, uh, of an uprising and use of our bodies. Very interesting because to me, it's kind of the kind of coming back to this, this is not, this conversation is not over, right? These, these issues are, are definitely very, very present for us in, in the US. Um, so that is kind of another way that I've used the crayon material in, but more in a drawing, right? Um, but again, Amy, I know that you've been in my studio and I have all these different bodies of works, right? So then I kind of meander, so I go, okay, then I'm drawing and I'm using crayon or I'm drawing and weaving with paper and crayon or, and then this is instance, I started to use the leather because again, I wanted, how can, can I use the leather in some way that's pictorial? And that's when I started to, to nail these strips of leather lace onto um, wood panels and then start to draw on them. So this is the, the piece on the left is a charcoal drawing on top of the leather. And the piece on the right was like, well, I can also weave them and start to put them and stretch them onto the panels or stretcher bars. And this is graphite on, onto the leather. Um, and ultimately started to do weavings with painting, right? How can I incorporate the leather and actually skin tone colors, right? Um, so there's been kind of all this kind of different exploration of these materials and in, in ways, well, is the work representational or is the work abstract? I think that's another another kind of ideas of what I've been trying to figure out. How, how do I use this material and, and what it is, right? Um, I know I showed these in, in the exhibition that um, I had at the Museum of Quilt and Textiles um, in 2018. So these were a series from that. It was, kind of really focusing in on the skin tone colors again and in, in putting them but more of a weaving context and in an abstract context. Um, and lately I've been going a lot more into trying to okay go ahead and, and do the weaving good can I put the painting and the weaving together so the panel on the right is strictly painted acrylic on on the wood panel and the left is the leather painted uh, woven piece so together so to almost have a conversation because really a lot of the designs and the patterns I'm thinking about weaving or leather craft in creating them um, but yet the painting starts to remind me more of like minimalist paintings and paintings that are about color or um, and certainly there's a a, a very historically uh, uh, the tradition of doing non-objective painting, right? Um, but I know that it, for the exhibit I had at the quilt of color perception, I was already starting to ask those questions for myself, right? So it is color theory in terms of thinking about chromatic colors, right? Or color theory in terms about race and racial relations, right? Is trying to put these two ideas together, right? I think in, in my work. Um, and I feel that the leather lace and the work that's weaving is a lot more, um, there's a, a bit more of a visceral kind of reading to it, kind of more connected to the physical plane versus a more illusionistic painting on a flat surface that's two dimensional. So, so that's another thing that's been kind of interesting to me too. Like, can I put the two together in some way? So these are some of the kind of more formal paintings, non-objective paintings like Stratum 5. And I've also been trying to think about scale, right? If I can go larger, it's a little more difficult with the leather lace. I'd have to get a lot bigger you know, kind of, um, pieces of leather and it's pretty expensive. Um, 
but I, I have been kind of interested too in, in scale relationships. So this is, oop, this is um, a, a mural that I did for the Chicanx Biennial uh, at Makla. So again, kind of you see the color chart, but now influenced by the weaving and looking at um, kind of the weaving patterns and types of uh, this in particular, I was also thinking about floor and parquet floors and how they're structured, right? Because it reminds me a lot about weaving as well. Um, but that was very influential in trying to do this, this new um, almost color chart um, that really our skin tone is not just one color or we're not just one, one color, but rather a mixture of many, right? Um, a little more recently in my studio, these are kind of a little more informal pictures. Um, I, when I did my castings of my daughter's feet, uh, I had a lot of alginate left over every time I would cast something. So I just started to cast my hands. You could see the different colors of, of um, the crayon mixing, which I started to kind of, it, it gives it a little bit more eerie um, look to it. But I, I, I really like that as well. Uh, but I'm starting to weave into that, like how can I extend the physical body and then bring bring a weaving into it. Um, so that's what I started to do with, with this one as well as this other casting. Can I put it in the context of a weaving or somehow um, of something that I'm building that's 2D that create something around it, a 3D uh, form that has the skin tone colors as well. So these are some of the works that I've, I, I've just been kind of working on this summer and, and continue to, to mine these different materials and how they have conversations with um, my ideas as well as uh, kind of the imagery that I, that I want to work with and maybe the symbols as well. Uh, thank you so much for showing your work. This is really interesting that you've um, used crayons as a jumping off point for this discussion in culture and race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when I saw that, that's the skin tone pack, that idea, that really just resonated for me, right? Because as you're saying, uh, we change colors at different seasons, because I think that happens, yeah, I get much darker in the summer, right? But then that's also can be used against you culturally, right? Like your parents, don't get, stay out of the sun, because you're going to get too dark. And it's like, well, what's wrong with being dark, right? Um, so there, there is a kind of hierarchy with that, right? The color, the ideas of colorism. Uh, what's valued, what's not so valued, what's dangerous, what's not dangerous, what's, so that opens up a lot of different kind of ideas, right, about um, certain stratums or organizations or structures or hierarchies about what's valued, what's less valued. Um, so yeah, Amy, this to me, you know, you can go just down a rabbit hole, right, of like these um, very interesting um, ideas and structures that I think that's what I'm interested in in my work bringing up, right? Pinpointing to and, and hoping people uh, will consider that in, in, in terms of conversations. But you've been making this work for 10 plus years. Do you feel like your work in some way has paved the way for this conversation in America to happen now? Well, you know, it, it's interesting, Amy, because it, it is something I have thought about for a long time, right? And I feel like that is because of a person of color, um, working class origins, but I was able to go to school, to go study university, right? So I've had to really kind of <clears throat> figure out and go into more white spaces, right? And, and kind of figure out, well, how, how do I navigate this? So a lot of that is something that it, it, it's been in my consciousness, right? But I'm, you know, there's so many artists that are, uh, have, have been working with these ideas as well that I love, right? Everything from Glenn Ligon to Carl Walker, um, just incredible uh, African-American black artists that have been really talking about these issues in their work. And so to me, I'm influenced by them, right? And yet, you know, I, I feel as a person of color, these have been concerns of mine for a while, right? It is interesting though that now it's like, oh wow, we're, we're it's great to see that some of this work ha can have a place in that conversation, right? So I'm excited about that, 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 that maybe my work can be seen because maybe it's kind of touching upon something that is in the air, is in the, um, is in the concerns, right? But I know that um, many Black African-American artists and Latino artists and 
you know, many other artists have been have been talking about a lot of this kind of um, thematically about this work, and I think um, you know those are artists that that really influence me, right? And so for me, and my practice is where I go to and to, to see. Um, but I, I, I want to continue this dialogue, though, for sure, in, in in any of the realms that I am in, and especially as an art educator, uh, being able to do that with my students in, in my school. Um, and then opportunities like having this conversation with you, Amy, and, and um, people who, who frequent and, and support the Museum of, of Quilton Textiles, right? Because this is great, being able to have this kind of platform, uh, to have this exchange, I think, is what a lot of museums and art cultural spaces are starting to kind of become more open to if they haven't done so already, right? Yeah, and even as a curator, I am hyper conscientious of being a gatekeeper of who gets to show in a museum context and, and even who I choose for these interviews as well. It's, it's heavily weighted and we try as much as possible to um, have a lot of diverse voices in these decision making, um, starting with an exhibition committee to review your work, for example. Um, and diversifying our staff more too. Yeah, no, those are great. I and mean, I think that this is, this is a conversation. If this institution is not having it, it's kind of like, where are you? <laughs> right? mm -hmm. um, with the, with all the, the events that have happened in the last few months. It's an interesting time, Amy, it really is. Um, just to wrap up, I want to just thank you one more time for having this conversation with me. If people were interested in seeing some more of your work, where could they go to see that? Well, I, I do have a website, so it is um, just my first two names, uh, PilarGuero.com. Um, so I was awarded um, a solo exhibition at the Sanchez Art Center in the spring. So I'm hoping it will be open again, and, and hopefully that'll, that'll happen at that point sometime in April. We're crossing our fingers. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed that everything can still stay on, on schedule, too. Mm -hmm, well, I have a little show and tell that I completely forgot about. But I have a piece here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and I'm inspired by it. So I've been thinking about you a lot during the pandemic. Too. Well, thank you again so much, Pilar. No, you're welcome, Amy. Thanks for the opportunity. It's been fun to talk and kind of catch up a little bit. You can see a little bit of what I've been doing. But um, stay safe, you know, hang in there. I know um, I'm glad you're doing this because I think this is great that artists can connect and then with other audiences and kind of keep, keep the dialogue going. So I really appreciate the opportunity and quite a bit. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And, and thank you so much again for chatting with me and wishing you and your family health and prosperity at this moment in time too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we're going to have this up on our e-news and the SJMQT YouTube page as well. So take care wherever you are.